Installing the L2 hydraulic group set did not go to plan. So it seems we have a front brake issue. Now previously in this build series, we cut the fork steerer tube to length with a slight issue, routed all the cables through the frame the easy way, installed the front and rear derailleurs as well as the front and rear brake calipers. Which brings us to this point, installing the L2 RX 2x12 speed hydraulic group set, which has had more hype than any other AliExpress component in recent times. Interestingly though, only 58% of you said you would buy it in my poll. So let's see how it all unfolded. So first things first, we need to get the cables through the bars and if you are anything like me this isn't a fun part of the bike build luckily though i have johnny with me who is a bike mechanic with 18 years of experience in part one of the build all the cables were rooted through the frame so we have them all poking out of the head tube looking at us ominously waiting to go through the bars routing the cables through the bars is not just as simple as pushing the cables through and hoping for the best you need to consider a few things so i've made sure that all the cables i need to run on the left are on the left and the cables I need to run on the right or on the right. So we have a rear brake and a front gear cable on the left and the front brake and the rear gear on the right. You also need to look where the cables connect to the shifters so that the cables come out of the bars in the correct orientation. Johnny then set about getting the forks installed in the frame. To do this, the top and bottom bearings were greased and placed into the top and bottom of the headset. The forks then slid into the frame and at the same time, Johnny was figuring out what spaghetti junction should be looking like whilst installing the bearing cap or any spacers whilst making sure that the fork didn't fall down he made it look easy and to be honest he had me questioning some of my funky techniques to build my previous bike nothing like a bit of self-reflection what am i doing with my life now this is how you know you are incapable hands when your mechanic goes over to his bag and pulls out an old pedal strap and uses it to hold the forks in place i guess when you know you know and i don't think i know now we can start rooting through the bars and we're going to do the rear brake cable first so you've gone and done it I first time. I don't even know if that is. Unbelievable. Is it the right way? It is on the right side as well. Hours I spent doing that and I've just watched you just push it through. Yeah. I thought I'd try it. Maybe I should do the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The first cable simply pushed through the bars and peeked out like a little turtle's head. Unbelievable, Jeff. Oh, the move was just scintillating, Jeff. We then used a pick to grab the end of the cable and pulled all the excess through. Another lesson learned, give it a try freehand because maybe, just maybe, the cable will come through. I'm putting it down to technique and experience though. Yeah, well, so far, I think the routing on this handlebar is pretty decent. It's not too hard to route cables through. Well, we'll see it. Well, we're doing the hoses for now. We'll see when we get to the gear artists. <laughs> it might be a different story. Famous last words. Now we didn't have quite as much luck with the gear cable as the brake housing so we needed to grab our trusty internal routing tools to give us a hand. The kit was made by a company called Risk. Maybe they were referring to the risk that you take by installing routed cables. So this tool comes with different sort of uh, adapters, heads to screw on. So we've got one for gear. I believe this one's for brake here as well. And does that just push into the end? Yeah, so it just push in on the end. So the first point of call is to place the metal adapter into the end of the housing. So you kind of push it and screw it into the housing. Although there are no official threads for it to grip, it just grips tightly. The other side of the adapter has a thread that the cable guide screws into. Next, we route the cable routing tool through the bars, making note of the end that you need facing the housing to screw it into the adapter. To do this, Johnny used a magnet that was on the end of the routing tool to fish the cable through. It was a little fiddly, but with just one other cable in the bars, there was enough space to see it and pull it through. We can then screw the end of the cable routing tool into the adapter that's in the housing, giving us something that we can guide the housing with and give it a little tug. <laughs> it's a fiddly little process, but once it's all linked up, you can then pull the cable through. Come on. There we go. Come out. Yeah. Ooh, it's tight. Definitely tight there with those two in it. Yeah. That's the limit. <laughs> So that's the left side complete, we can move on to the right hand side. Johnny started with the brake hose and again use the adapter after giving it a try freehand. As you install more cables, the entrance hole on the stem gets tighter and tighter, so it gets harder and harder. Having said that, using the routing tool, the cable came through without issue. The excess was pulled through to make sure that it didn't slip back into the bars. Nothing like wrestling a cable through your bars for it to slip back in when you're not watching. Just like that, we we're onto the final cable and up to this point, we probably spent around 30 to 40 minutes on the routing. Because now we're really to the point where now we're really tight. We're struggling. The space. 
As you can see from these shots, the space is super tight and it's just not possible to get the angle. So back to the root and tool we go. And even getting this through the bars wasn't easy. Now, while I was busy trying to get some fancy shots of Johnny, he was hard at work rooting the tool through the bars for the final time. He has way more patience than I do, to be honest, but with many attempts, the cable came through. <sighs> Finally. Oh. How was that for you, mate? Yeah, a bit tight, <laughs> but we got there in the end, I hope, unless this bit's twisted, no. But upon examining the cable orientation, we needed the cables to be swapped so that at the shifter they could go in nice and neat. So devastating news, the cable had to be pulled back out, which was very painful indeed, having watched Johnny route that cable for 30 minutes. With our heads held high, the process was repeated. The cable guide routed through and then the housing routed through the guide. And about 30 minutes later, all the cables were installed. So yeah, the cable room wasn't the easiest on this bike. With all the cables in place, we can then get the stem clamped down. This requires some pulling of cables and wiggles of the stem, but everything aligned. The stem was installed and the cables were looking mighty fine when I took a peek under the stem. Now it's time to get the shifters installed. The first point of call is to loosen the clamping bolts so that the shifter can slide onto the bars with minimal friction. We did notice at this point that getting onto the mounting bolts was a little bit of a pain. It's not gonna be fun getting a torque wrench on the mounting bolt later. We positioned the shifter so it was roughly in the correct position and gently tightened. Now we can install the housing, starting with the front brake on the right hand side. Johnny aligned the brake hose with the shifter and worked out how much we needed to cut off so that it fit in the shifter perfectly. He then marked the housing so we didn't lose its position. I bought this Jaguar Space Age hydraulic cable cutting tool to cut the hose and with one swift motion the hose was snipped to length. Next we need to set up the end of the hydraulic hose that will be screwed into the shifter and that starts by pressing a barb into the end of the hydraulic hose. To drive this barb into the hose I bought another specific tool, the Jaguar needle driver. I've probably spent as much on tools as I have bike parts at this point. Sorry bank account. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. I want to mention that you need enough hose to go into the tool. If you don't, then you can't clamp the tool onto the hose and you'll have to resort to the old prehistoric technique, the hammer and the whack. With the bar balancing in the end of the hose, you can then close the clamp on the tool which grips the housing. You can then screw the end of the tool and that will press a barb into the hose. We can then slide the bolt over the housing. This needs to go on before the olive. What is an olive, you ask? It's this little piece of metal and its purpose is to create a seal which will prevent water from leaking at the joint. Johnny actually said that these olives were particularly tight and they were actually pretty hard to get over the brake hose. We may have used a rubber mallet, but there is no footage so did it really happen yeah it did once the olive is on this is how it looks before we screw it into the shifter we can then wiggle the shifter up a little to make sure that the hose is fully pressed into the shifter and begin to tighten the two bolts together joining the hydraulic housing to the shifter you need an 8 millimeter spanner and a 10 millimeter spanner to tighten the bolt as this bolt is tightened the olive will be crushed inside the joint which is what creates the watertight seal it's quite a substantial thread and requires a fair amount of wrenching to get it tight the front brake system is coming together nicely with the brake block in place Johnny then tested the front brake to make sure that the pads were moving and the system was set up correctly they were now we can repeat the same process again on the other side so the clamp bolt was loosened on the shifter and it was slid roughly into place the hydraulic hose was marked and we use a cutting tool to give it the snip the barb was placed onto the end of the hose with no issues and the bolt was placed over the cable before the olive this olive was also really tight making it difficult to get over the hose but johnny aka Magic hands got the job done. So they are tight. Yeah, they're very tight. We then remove the placeholder bolt that's in the shifter. This was also in the previous shifter, but I forgot to mention. We placed our hose into the shifter and tighten the bolt onto the shifter. The brakes will be fine tuned a little bit later in the build. Onto the front gear cable. And the first thing to do is to snip the cable down to the correct size, work out how much cable goes into the shifter, and then use a cable snips to cut the cable down to length. Check the cable end isn't squished with a little tool or a pick. The inner cable can then be fed through the compressionless cable housing and you will see it come out the other end. Hopefully, if it doesn't, we have a problem. 
ours did and it all seemed very very simple watching a professional at work now you would just make it look easy we can then do the same on the other side place the shifter in roughly the correct position then cut the cable down to size i forgot to mention previously that johnny also puts cable ends onto the end of the gear housing before it is placed into the shifter the inner gear cable can then be routed into the cable housing we then place the cables into the clamp bolts on the rear derailleur and the front derailleur this is to hold them in place and keep them out of the way. Not shabby at all, and I am liking how the bike is coming together. The little rubber grommet at the back was put back into the frame to stop any water getting in. Now, this is where the story gets interesting. Bleeding the L2 hydraulic brakes. Now you would think that this would be plain sailing. It's just a few simple steps according to their bleed video, but oh no, we're about to enter a world of frustration. We started with the rear brake, so we removed the brake pads from the caliper by undoing the pad retaining bolt. I took this opportunity to have a quick look at the pads and they look like, they look like brake pads. Bleed block, normally you would use it when you bleed the brakes, especially when you're opening the bleed port on the caliper, just stops you contaminating the, the, the uh, actual disc pads. So in went the bleed block, which sits against both pistons. There were plenty of blocks that came with this kit that I purchased specifically for this build. The pad retaining bolt goes back in to keep the bleed block in place. Bit of a tongue twister that. I also bought this Bleed Solutions bleed cup as recommended by Johnny. The cups that can come with these bleed kits aren't always the best. This one is aluminium and it feels pretty solid. The bleed port screw was removed from the top of the shifter without issue and the bleed cup was screwed into the port. This is only done up gently as the threads are super delicate. Oil is then placed into the cup enough to cover the hole where the oil enters the shifter. So I'll put my hand on top just helps create a vacuum. Let's get a bit closer. Uh, yeah, so it helps get the uh, air out of the brake. So it should just all come out. Actually, it doesn't feel that bad. I think just all we need to do now is adjust the lever. That is any air lower down on the hose. So. We noticed that the lever pull was pretty far in order to apply the brakes, but we need to check that later with the wheels and the disc fully installed. The little plug or bung can then be placed into the bleed cup to block the hole and it can be unscrewed. Over to the front brake and the bleed port screw was removed from the top of the shifter. We then quickly maneuvered the bleed cup from the left shifter to the right shifter with the fluid still in to save draining it and refilling it. The o-ring and the bleed port screw were then reinstalled on the left shifter and the bleed block was removed from the rear caliper. We left the brake pads off and out so they don't get contaminated with any oil. The pads were then removed from the front brake and the bleed block was installed into the front brake caliper. Everything's going well so far. Johnny pressed the lever in and out and the right shifter didn't feel as good as the left shifter. We thought that it could be because of the lever adjustment screw so that was screwed inwards to bring the lever forward away from the bars. This is a vital moment though so do remember this and can you guess or see what happened? I have no idea. Johnny then tried to create the vacuum with his hand over the cup whilst pulling the lever and this just wasn't happening. This little squeak also started, which was odd. The squeak was happening because the lever was clipping the shifter body. You can see there was a little mark on the lever and the shifter body itself. Not ideal, but the squeaking went away shortly after, so that one's in the past. We then compared the left shifter to the right shifter, so the front brake definitely didn't feel as good, so the next step was to bleed it. Now for those that don't know what bleeding a brake is, it's essentially the process of removing any air from the system. If there is air in the system, it will affect braking performance and the fill at the lever. To bleed the brakes, you force oil in from the bottom of the system, which is the brake caliper, the lowest point. This is because air will naturally rise to the top and come out of the shifter which is the top of the system the highest point so out came the bleed port on the caliper and the syringe was set up making sure that there was no air in the syringe so that we didn't introduce any additional air into the system the syringe was screwed into the bleed port on the caliper and we attempted to push the oil into the system to bleed the brakes but nothing we were met with resistance at the syringe and were unable to push any oil through. Off camera, we checked the obvious things and tried again, but still no luck. Something seemed wrong, although nothing obvious stood out. We then thought we would try and bleed the rear brake to see if we could bleed that without any issue. The syringe was added to the caliper and then given a cheeky squeeze. Lo and behold, oil entered the system and air bubbles came out into the bleed cup. So this was working as expected. So why wasn't it working using the exact same steps on the front brake? So it seems we have a front brake issue, unable to bleed the brake to get the oil to go up. We've undone the hose from both sides, oil's dripping down, and we've also undone the 
caliper as well and oil stripping out so uh, we did look at the connection into the actual um, lever couldn't see anything unusual in there the olives could like basically crush correctly the pin or the insert is fine so we, i can only think it's the actual lever itself at this point i'd kept johnny hostage for long enough his part-time youtube acting role is not over yet though and we will see him again on the channel in a future build it might be a different story I then had this sinking feeling that this 350 pound L2 hydraulic group set wasn't actually going to work and after deep dive into AliExpress to try and claw some of my money back or try and get a new right shifter. So what would any good YouTuber do? I went to bed and completely forgot about it whilst dreaming about perfect hydraulic braking riding through the Cotswolds, only to wake up into reality and realise I still had an issue to deal with. So I sat at the computer and started messaging people. First L2, no idea if it was the right person, but they sent me a link to the bleed videos, which I'd already watched. They weren't gonna help. Then on the off chance, I thought I'd message Joe from China Cycling YouTube channel. Joe has loads of YouTube videos on this type of product. He seemed to be in the loop and maybe he could provide a solution. Another dreamy night's sleep and I woke up to a lovely email from Joe at China Cycling, which included this line. The screw that is to adjust the lever angle and the preload of the piston. Preload of the piston. Did you adjust that? If that is screwed all the way in, it will block the cylinder, preventing you from bleeding the brakes. So the lever adjustment screw is also the piston preload screw. Hmm. Did we adjust it? Yes, we did. I ran to the bike at 7 a.m. to give it a try. Screwed the lever adjustment screw inwards instead of out in my excitement. I went too far and the screw came out the back of the lever. Stays in, Jordan, stays in. I looked for a way to get it back in. I couldn't, so off came the lever. At this point, I remembered that I actually have a YouTube channel and I need to record this. So I asked my fiance to come and record on her iPhone at 8 a.m. in the morning. Cheers, babe. You're a legend. So with the lever back on, I could try and bleed the front brake and see if this lever adjustment bolt was a cause of all our problems. Then the big moment, I squeezed the syringe and bubbles started coming out of the system. There's bubbles coming out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've never been so happy to see bubbles in my life. And I have had a few very decent bubble baths in my time. What can I say? One bloody screw, one little screw. Yes, one screw cost me about six hours in total. A big thank you to Joe from China Cycling for providing the solution. Now click here if you wanna see the first part of this build. Believe it or not, there were some problems in part one as well. So if you want some more banter and some more Johnny knowledge, this is your next stop.